everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here, and today we're going to be going over Rambo and talking about all of his combos, his buttons, and even all of his custom moves, which we will get into after we've finished talking about what he has universally. So, uh, starting off with his pokes, just like most characters in this new patch, they are fairly plus on block, plus 13, plus 12, and plus 20 for his down 4. So they're all very plus, so it's very easy to um, jail into his standing buttons. Um, if I take the opponent off of auto block, it's very easy to come to jail into his standing one, his standing two, and even off of his down one, you can jail into his standing three, which is plus one on block. So if they block that, you know, you can get some plus frames off of that, go into for some of his quick mids, that have decent range. But uh, yeah, all of his pokes, there's nothing too interesting about them. His down four is pretty, pretty slow. I don't see people using it that often, especially since his down three has pretty decent range. It's kind of like Johnny Cage's and he gets down really low, so people are usually using down 1s and down 3s. And um, But yeah, nothing special, but also nothing bad, so that's a good start. Okay, so his standing buttons, his standing 1, 8 frames, and the only string he has off of it um, universally is his 1, 2, 1, which is just a high into 2 mids, you can't get anything off of it, it's safe on block, um, you know, it's just there for a mix-up in some of his other variations where he might get grabs off of this string. But, you know, it's just some safe mids, and it's very similar to his, um, other- his standing 2 string, which is just 2 2 2 2 2 2 Which where he just does a bunch of whacks with his knife, knocks the opponent down, and it is also safe on block. And because these are all so safe in, like, basically every way- oh, except that, that's not safe. But if you fin just do the first one and the third one, it's very safe. And for the standing two string, you know, all of these hits are safe. Negative two, negative seven, and negative three. So yeah, standing two string is very safe. You can use it for auto shimmies, you know, just do one attack into throw, two attacks into throw, or just do all three, and you know, can lead to some mix ups, but you know, very basic standing strings. His standing three, as we saw before, it's, you know, just a kick, it's plus on block. Standing four is a kick, it's not plus on block, but you know, does some damage if you want to use it in combos. You're not really going to be using it that often though, it doesn't really do anything helpful, but, you know, it exists, it looks kind of cool. Okay, his forward one is one of the great mids that we're going to be getting into. So, just before we start going into some more of the buttons, he, Rambo's game is just mid, 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 mid. He has so many mids, and like, lows and overheads, which are basically count as mids, because they're things that you have to block. But, so yeah, he has a 11 frame, 11 frame, so, 11 frame, hey wait, let me turn up off auto, so, 11 frames, 11 frames, 12 frames, um, 13 frames, 18 frames, and, like, he also has an overhead, which is 19 frames, and, you know, sweep, which is 13, like, he has so many mids, so he's forward, forward one, back two, forward two, back one, back three, and forward four are all essentially mids that he can use, and they're all very useful in different ways, so <laughs> he's got a plethora of mids to throw out, and so yeah, we'll get into those. So, his forward one is 11 frames, it's one of his fastest, one of the two fastest that he has. Off of his forward one, he can go to forward one, two, two, that's the only string off of it, but it's not nothing bad, because it actually is a middleless combo launcher, and you can get some of his bread and butter combos that, um, that you'll be using if you don't have like any other combo moves in your variation, just like he has universally. He doesn't have any um, combo special moves, but thanks to this string, you can get some cool combos like... Oops. And that's charging up his crushing blow, and that's pretty decent damage, and you don't have to spend the meter there and it'll still be 250 for no meter, which is really good off of a very fast mid, so you know, anything that punishes or think that they're gonna poke, you, you know, it's just a good fast mid that also leads to combos, so you know, that's really, really, really strong move. Okay, um, next, but uh, something to keep in mind, obviously, if it's a combo starter and it's a fast mid, it's gonna be very unsafe on block if you do the whole thing, but the first hit is actually very safe. It's only minus seven, I believe. Yeah, so that's pretty safe. Um, you know, only some like weird moves like Raiden's Discharge and stuff will punish it. But, you know, you can throw this out, try and... This is unsafe, but, you know, 
they probably aren't going to punish the second hit of it if they're ready for the third one. But you never want to throw out the third hit. It's minus 30. You're definitely getting punished, even though there's a ton of pushback. Okay, so he's back too. Um, this is another string. It doesn't lead to a combo launcher, but you can get buttons after it. As you saw in our combo here, you can cancel it into other special moves. To extend combos, you can do something like this. Just normally, and you know, it's just a fast mid. It can, you know, just cancel into buttons. And it's also safe, I believe. So the first two hits are safe. Yep. First hit is also very safe, minus one, and the whole string is, that's unsafe. But it does have another ender you can do, which is very powerful. Back one, uh, back two, two, four is actually an overhead, which is going to be very powerful knowing that he has a low special move in basically every one of his variations. So that's a very strong mix-up tool, like going into the low and charging up the overhead. I mean, charging up the crushing blow, or you can just throw out the overhead, and it's extremely safe at minus one. So you can just throw out this mid-string as much as you want, you know, after pokes or whatever, you just want to do something safe. And it does a decent chunk of damage as well, you know, just throw it out, it's a very safe mid-string, and it's very fast. So, that's very good to have. Um, I don't think I talked about his back one. His back one is another mid. It's 18 frames, so it's a bit slower, but it has decent range. Unusual looking startup, but it does have an overhead in the string. Oops. It has two overheads, actually. I thought there was only one. So yeah, two overheads, and I believe it's actually safe. Yeah, two overheads in a string, and it's safe. That's pretty awesome. And of course, since there's a double overhead, there's a lot of mix up here. So I can go back one into slide, back one, two into slide, or back one, two, one, and two overheads. So, you know, it's either mid low, mid overhead low, or mid overhead overhead. So there's a lot of guessing off of this string, and, you know, you have an option to have it completely safe. So you don't even have to make it an unsafe mix. You can just go for the overheads if you don't want to risk it for the, the low. So that's a very good mix up tool right there. Okay, his uh, forward, forward 2 is another one of his mids, and it actually reaches a fairly fairly good distance. It's just a bit closer than like starting starting distance. Um, he has a few extensions he have, uh, has off of this. Once again, it has an overhead, which is unfortunately unsafe. Um, not by too much though, only minus 10, so you know, sometimes people might mess up the punish. The second hit though is um, very safe at minus, minus 6. But uh, yeah, so he has an overhead ender, which obviously he can mix up with the low once again. Lots of mix up with this, lots of mix ups with this character. Or he has a safe ender if he just goes forward two one four, and that is minus four with some decent pushback. So yeah, very safe. Okay, his back three is another one of his mids. It's a very good mid, twelve frames, one of, like one of his faster ones. And it also has pretty decent range, considering he doesn't move himself forward. He just stands over here and it'll still hit. Wow, that's really big range. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, he puts out his leg really far. And so, yeah, it's deceptively long-reaching mid. And it's a double-hitting string, just like kind of Jax's forward 3-3, but this is back 3-3. So in um, variations where you can combo into, like, combo starters, you can hit confirm the string into something that'll start combos. But obviously he doesn't have that in his base toolkit, but we'll get into those later for sure. And it is also safe. So he has a lot of really safe mids that he can just throw out. His forward three is this interesting high attack, where he kind of just like spins around and kicks the opponent. It's kind of like his standing kicks, but he actually moves forward, so it's a bit more useful. And especially in um, uh, variations where he has the combos, and especially the one where he lifts them up into the air uh, on the rope, this is going to be used in combos quite a lot, because you can actually combo with it pretty easy. I don't know how I can demonstrate. Wait, maybe if we go into the corner. But yeah, when they're up high and you do this, you can get combos off of it. Um, which happens very easily in some of these variations. There we go. Let's see, that was just an example there, but we'll get into it more when we actually have those combo starters. And that also means it's a pretty decent anti-air if they're jumping from a distance. So if they are jumping in and, like from far away, like over here, you can do this and it'll hit them out of the air and you can actually get a combo from it. And most of his standing kicks, like this one as well, is also a pretty good anti-air. Um, I haven't really tested his pokes, but you know, his buttons are probably not that bad at anti-airs. Um, okay. So yeah, 4-3, 
It's just like a moving standing kick, very good for combos, and it's also just good in the neutral because it reaches decently far. Like, yeah, that's the start of the round distance. You can hit the opponent with it, so yeah, very good stuff. His back four, obviously, just a sweep, nothing too special. Plus 20, 13 frames. And his forward four, though, is pretty interesting. It's like a short ver version of Aaron Black's um, drop kick. It's 19 frames, so pretty fast for an overhead. Like, that leads to a lot of mix-ups mix -ups off of things where you have advantage. So, like, maybe you land a poke, you can go for this. Like, and they have to guess whether you're going to go for that or, like, for a low. Or just, you know, another low poke. Poke, poke, poke. If they think you're going to go for another poke and you actually go for an overhead, that can lead to some scary mix-up. And, yeah, it's pretty fast. But this move is also... If I just quickly throw on... Uh, no, I can just do it off of... Even on the fastest uh, breakaway timing, this move can actually be connected off to his combo starting string. And as you can see, this is his armor break. And he will get the crushing blow for it if it breaks the armor. So that's very good. And you can get it basically off of anything, no matter when they break away. So off of his down two crushing blow, he can get it easily. As you saw there, off of his meterless combo starter, he can get it guaranteed. Even if they don't break away, you can still get it. So you get guaranteed damage that way, which is pretty cool. And you get put full screen. Um, but it also gets a crushing blow if you just hit it twice. So if you dash up and then hit them with it again. Rude. <laughs> and you know, maybe they're expecting you to do it a low or something. And then you manage to get it again. Then you get the crushing blow. And yep. Yeah. So very good overhead. And it's also basically safe. It's minus 11, but with all that pushback, a lot of characters are going to have quite a bit of difficulty actually punishing this. So, uh, yeah, those are all his basic buttons. Oh, except for his throws. So his back throw is just kind of, you know, pretty basic. It leaves him actually pretty close. He was about like here. So if you do a dash in, you can get another one pretty easy. So he's got some pretty good throw loops. Don't push me. Yeah, that's pretty good. And, you know, if you don't want to throw, you know, you can dash in and do some, like, mids. So he's got a lot of really good throw, um, strike throw game, strike throw mix up, because he's got lots of mids and also th throws that leave him pretty close. And his forward throw, oops, leaves him even closer, like right on top of him close. So it's very easy to throw loop this one, which is very scary in this game. Throw loops are very powerful, especially, oops, uh, spoilers, <laughs> when you have really good mids like Rambo that like even lead to combos if you want. But uh, as we just saw there, this his forward throw actually has a crushing blow and it lands uh, if he hasn't jumped or been hit for 10 seconds. And I think that's probably been 10 seconds now. Nope. Gotta be 10 seconds now though. And after this crushing blow, he can actually get a combo. And lead to some pretty chunky damage, especially since it leaves him on the ground. He can actually get some pretty good... Um, uh, unbreakable damage. I'm just gonna turn on easy crushing blows so we don't have to wait 10 seconds every time we want to do this. But, um, you know, he can get some pretty good unbreakable damage if he does something like... Hmm, what does a lot of damage? Uh, oh yeah. Or it's just something simple, like, even something simple like this is basically unbreakable... Rude. <laughs> like... 280 unbreakable, that's pretty awesome damage, and as we saw before, you can also go in for his meterless combo launcher from it. Ah, oh, root. Damn it. It can be a little bit tight, because, like, it's kind of weird. And also, like, if you've charged up your um, other thing, you can get double crushing blows in this combo, and get some big damage. And yeah, so that, just le that leads to a lot just if you haven't been hit or jumped for a long while and you get that crushing blow. So it's a really cool crushing blow and I think it's one of the more unique ones. And I really hope they add more crushing blows like this in the future because it's really unique. And it's great how it leads to combos and it also has a cool like requirement. Like you just have to try and not get hit and also don't jump, which is can be hard for a lot of people in this game. But, you know, very cool crushing blow. Um, yeah, really awesome. Okay. Um, oh yeah, just quick note on his jump attacks. They're actually pretty good. This one's kind of like Sub-Zero, so he can do it very early and it'll still hit the opponent because he swings very, like, downwards. So he can do it, like, almost at the very peak. Oh yeah, at the peak of his jump, just he can't do it while he's jumping up. Oh wait, yeah, wow. Really awesome jumping one. Look, even as he's rising up, he can get his jumping attack. Obviously he can't combo off of it, but it's really cool that he can do this, like, from almost any distance in the air. You can get his jumping one. So that's a very good jump in attack. You can hit it from any height. Really, really powerful. Almost like a jump in kick. 
Oh, his jump in too, you know, a little bit worse, but has a bit better range. Actually, it's not that great, but you know, we'll be using it in combos because it does a bit more damage. And his jumping kick is just like the overpowered jumping kicks in this game, like Joker and Baraka. It has this amazing angle, he just puts out his legs and kicks them. It's great, like, perfectly diagonal angle, and, uh, you know, it just works very well at his job. Okay, now let's get into his, um, like, basic special moves. So he has this um, bow shot, which he can actually hold down and then release the arrow. The arrow travels actually surprisingly slow. It can, like, deceivingly slow, like, you can almost see it travel across the screen. But as you can see, they are very plus from a long distance, about plus 20. And they are even safe up close, but the thing is, is you're not really going to be ever getting them, like, off of hits up close, because they can actually duck under them, even if they're block blocking and ducking, they'll just go under them. So, you know, it's not like he can use it to keep him safe. I mean, he can if he wants to be really crazy. Like, maybe if he's doing something off of like this, and they're ready for the overhead, he can do this. But, you know, otherwise, they're not going to get hit by that. But what's really cool about this is not only can he hold him down, if he holds the button down after he releases it, so you hold the button down, release it, and then hold it again, he stays in the bow stance, and he can release up to three arrows while in the stance at one time. And if you actually do that sequence fast enough, he can actually make them all combo. So he can do something like this. Oh, oops. Wait. There we go. And this is 140 damage, which is a lot of damage for projectiles that's meterlessly. So that's like almost as much damage as like some double amplified projectiles would do. Like that's a lot of damage for projectiles just because you managed to get this timing correct. Like 140. Big, big, big boy damage. And he can obviously like have them not combo if he does them slower. And you know, they won't have the scaling th that way, but you know. If you do get this timing down, every time you land a projectile, it's going to be 140 damage, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> Wait, what? But yeah, anyways, 140 damage. <laughs> um, okay, another one of his meterless, uh, meterless, I mean universal moves, is this um, trip trap, What I think that's what they call it. It's basically just like a low projectile, actually it's a mid. But, um, it's basically just there to, like, make the opponent respect you. Like, these are a bit slow, you know, they have 30 startup frames and they travel kind of slowly, so you can't really zone your opponent out too much with these, like, bow moves. But this one, it can be just be used, it's very fast, 13 frames, or 20 frames. And, you know, just hits very quickly. And you can also use it to end some combos, depending on what strings you're using. They can't go into some other special moves, like this, off the ground, it doesn't work. So you can go into this instead, and it has pretty de decent hit advantage, plus 25. You can like dash out, maybe go for your overheads, go for some, you know, obviously your great mids. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty good move, and he bends down while doing it, so here I'll test with Terminator. I don't know if this will work, I'll try. But if I do the... oh. <laughs> well you see, even, that, if, even if that was a real projectile, he goes straight under projectiles, because he bends down really low even though this one doesn't actually hit you, but you can see I'm not actually getting even touched by it if I do it at the right time. And he bends down for a long time as well, like he, he's down there for the whole frames of the move. So yeah, very powerful move for zoning and for just, you know, making the opponent respect you from a distance, even though it does like very little damage. Okay, um, let me just check. But I'm pretty sure that is everything that he has universally. Yeah, oh yeah, so another note on his, um, so he has this, this slide, of course, that we've been doing a bunch to, you know, end strings. It's a low, so obviously it's good for mix-ups, and it has a crushing blow if he does the amplified version twice, which is pretty good because, you know, you'll be doing combos like this. Oops, if you don't drop them. And, you know, if you end your combo in that, you're charging it up a bunch, and... With only, you only need to amplify it twice, and that's pretty easy, to be honest. Like, that's not a tall ask. And so now, the next time I do it, I'll get a crushing blow, and I can get some pretty big damage off of my combo. So if I do something like a down two crushing blow, or even just this, I'm getting big boy damage. 369 is really big, and that can also, like, go to some, like, big unbreakable damage. So if I do something like, uh... It's one of his most damaging mids. 
yeah, just something like this. If I like jump in, get back this, this, and I've got it charged up. Three, whoa, 365 unbreakable damage. That's basically like a fatal blow right there. So it's really good and he only has to amplify it twice. So that's a very good crushing blow. And his fatal blow, obviously, um, we've seen it kind of a lot. It's very fast and it has pretty decent um, hitbox. And you can combo off of basically any juggle pretty easily. Wait, is that not combo? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, wait, I think I... And, you know, does a decent chunk of damage. It's very easy to combo into. Nothing too special, but it's good that it's good. See, like, that basic combo there was just a down two into a string into a fatal blow, but that did a lot of damage even on itself. On its own, I mean. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, it's very easy to combo into. It's pretty fast. Good hitbox. Yeah, even that basic there was 430. So yeah, very good stuff. And, you know, obviously he'll have combos like this. Like even if he doesn't, um, after his down two crushing blow, he can get something like this. And that's big damage as well, so you know, he gets combos like in a very like similar way, but you know, they do good damage even without any of his custom moves. And speaking of those, let's actually go to and check out all of the moves that he can equip. So, um, starting off with like the first, these aren't in like actual any variations, I just put the moves together so that we can show them without having to go in and out of the, of the, pr uh, training mode. Okay, so in this variation we have the snare trap which costs two ability slots but, oops, but is a very powerful move um so as you can see it's a low and just like his um this move where he just whacks their legs he bends down really low while he does it so you know you can go under projectiles and if you amplify it you can get combos from it which is really really strong and because you can combo from it basically off of all of his good mids so he do something like this um, he can get a combo from it. So he do 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 do. He can do something like that. That's very simple. But I also have equipped in this variation his what is it called? Fubar. I'm sorry, I'm not the biggest Rambo fan, so I probably don't get all of these references. But he has a command grab, which is very good. He has tick throws with his command grab off of his down off of all of his pokes. Actually, except his down four. He has it off of his down 3 and his down 1, and it is a mid command grab, I believe. But let me just check that, I'll have... Um, no, 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 I'll just have him ducking. Actually, no, it's a high command grab. But, you know, at least he has tick throws off of his pokes, that's all that really matters. He doesn't actually have any other tick throws off of his, um, off of his strings, but, you know, it's always good to have a command grab, and it's also a really good ender for his strings, and he can choose what side he actually throws them on with the amplified version, so we can either amplify leave them on that side, or amplify leave them on the other side for a little bit more damage. So, these two moves can combine pretty well for some pretty high damaging combos, so if I do something like this, jump to dash in this, do that, and that's really big damage. I think I can even do more if I do the other string. that a bit too early. You need to do a bit more of a dash in. Oof. Wait. There we go. That's really big damage for one bar. 365. Damn, that's really good. And because this is like such an awesome pop-up, it just leaves them like standing there for a really long time. There is so much flexibility you have off of this. So like if you don't can't do that combo for some reason, like it's a bit too difficult, you can just do like simple, like even like two jump twos in your combo and then go into something like uh... and then go into, I don't know, one of your mids and then into the, into the grab so yeah, he has a ton of flexibility off of this he has some more complex combos, kind of like this where he gets the, the 4-3 into it, but you know 
there's just so many different options he has. Like he can go into this if he wants to keep them on the same side. He can and what's really good about the pop up as well is that it holds him there for so long. He can even just like dash around and then go in for a combo. Like if you're fast enough. So if I go jump in and maybe I'm in the corner and I want to get around and I don't want to be in the corner, obviously, I can ju just dash under him and completely change sides while I'm in the combo. So that's really powerful. And that's still really big damage, even though I like was wasted a bit of time dashing under him. So it's really powerful, and not only is it good that he holds him there for that long so that he can like switch sides, it also means that like when he's far away and he's maybe hit like someone that was trying to zone him out, and you know, he ducks under their projectile, hits him with this, amplifies it, he can just jump in and get a combo just the same way that he would normally, which is really, really strong. You can actually get the normal ones, like, because he has that much time. Oops, that's the wrong move. But yeah, you get the point. You can get the same thing. So this is a really powerful move, and it makes sense why it costs two slots. It's just a really amazing, uni um, just very versatile combos tool. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize you could do that. If you get underneath them, you can get combos off of his down two, which are always good. Oops. I wonder if I can do something like... I mean, there's not really much of a point in doing this, because, like, he gets great combos off of it anyways, and, like, it's unbreakable even if, you, if I go into a jump kick, they can't break until I do that. So you have a lot of, like, flexibility as to what you want to do. And that also means, like, he can go into this, like, super easily, his drop kick. See, even that, 271, that's guaranteed damage right there. Because if they did break away, it'd be even more damage. Four hundred and fifty-six because they decided to break away, but even two hundred and what was it, fifty or something? That's good damage, like for like absolute guaranteed damage that there's nothing they can do about. And I'm sure you could get even more if you wanted to do something fancy, but like, or you can just even get down to get three hundred damage. That's really good as well. You could actually combo for that. He seemed very high in the air. I've been tested this out, so we may as well see on the fly. Oh, I feel like that's a thing, that's a thing, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit it while we're here. Obviously, as the characters are out for a little bit more time, people are going to find a bit more combos. Yep, that works. So there's definitely something cool he can do like that. So jump to, into, into down to, and that's an option select. So if they break away or not, you're going to get... Even if they break away, you're going to get... Like, it's going to be a bit more damage because they break away. So it'll be like 310 damage, even if they break away. And if they don't break away, you get a down one, and maybe you can go, like, down one into slide or something. Like, do like this at the end. But I'm not going to bother trying that because... Uh, I don't have the execution while I'm recording. <laughs> but yeah, so this com this variation is kind of all about, you know, just being up close and being able to do combos. And, you know, the kind of characters... Kind of a bit more of an MKX character. He's got mix and throws. Um, but he's also got really good combos that you can do from basically anything. Any of his strings, except for this one actually doesn't work, but basically anything else is gonna work. Um, I think 2-2 two, two works. Okay, no, that does not work. <laughs> uh, where'd my point go? Yeah, okay. So most of his mids they work from, so that mid works. Just this mid doesn't, but this this mid works. His 4-3 works. Um, his, obviously his standing kicks don't work. Oops. <laughs> And this one works too. So yeah, he can get it off of most of the, the moves that actually matter. So that's all that matters. But yeah, really high damaging combos. And you can even ca combo into a fatal blow. Or wait, do I have crushing blow, easy crushing blows on? Because you still have the slide in this variation, you can even end that combo. Actually, that'll probably have a bit of gravity. I'll see, see what I can do. Yeah, um, you're probably not going to be actually be able to combo into the the slide crushing blow very easily because you need quite a lot of time to get that. <laughs> something like this. Yeah. Anyways, I'm sure there's something there you can experiment around, but what really matters is that you can combo into your fatal blow for a ton of damage with something like this. Damn it, wait. Maybe you have to do the back 3 to you again. So 
Sorry. What? Wait, no. Oh my god. Come on, Mr. Opinion, you can do this. Oh my god. I'll be here all day until I do this, I'm sorry. You can skip to when I find it. Are you kidding me? What? What works? I swear I've seen people do this all the time against me online. Against like the few rainbows I've fought. Come on. Ah! Oh, I know there's something there. Anyways, there'll be something, you know, something simple like this will even- Wait. Something simple like this will even work. Man, I'm salty that I couldn't land that. But, you know, something like this is gonna be a big chunk of damage anyways. But, man, I know you can get that 4-3 in there. I think you just have to be a little tighter, but, you know. Mr. Rob Ronan and recording and combos are not- not things that happen together. But anyways, very good combo tools. Um, by the way, just a quick note on this. Um, I have not been able to find any way to actually combo with this, like, from the opponent being in the air. So no, no matter what kind of, like, conversion you try to do, no matter how low to the ground they are, I'm pretty sure they have to be, like, truly grounded in order to actually get comboed by this. But, you know, that's fine, because you have a lot of strings which are on the ground, and we'll leave them... <laughs> we'll leave them on the ground and easy to be comboed. Anyways, we talked about that for a while, <laughs> let's move on to the next variation. And in this one, I actually don't remember what I put in it. We have, oh yeah, so this one is kind of like the setup variation. So I have a few interesting moves. Just a quick one to show is this. <laughs> oh, I have easy crushing blows on. This um, move that we saw in the combat cast, he basically just picks up an ant and he eats it. He gets 60 health back, I think. Oh no, 20. So you know, that's pretty good. It's not really gonna be that useful. Oh wait, does it scale? So yeah, the first one was 60, but then the ones you eat after it are a bit less. So, you know, you can get a, a decent chunk at the start, but then I guess if you do them really close to each other, they start to be less. Yeah. Um, but what's really cool about this is if your Fatal Blow is on cooldown, and I'm pretty sure that also means if you have used it and it's on cooldown, you get a Crushing Blow on the Ant, and you get a ton of health back, and that, that is really cool. So if I've used my Fatal Blow, you know, I've done a combo or something, gone into something like this. And I just get a big chunk of health back and, you know, it's almost like they mercyed me that I've got another chance after I do something like that. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, that's basically all I have to say about this move. It's a little bit slow, but you know. It's cool in essence, and you'll probably only really be using it, like, after your Fatal Blow, when you're gonna really get that big amount of health back, 230, so yeah. It's a really cool move. Um, you just have to use it situationally. Don't be using it all the time, because it's kind of slow. But I thought it's kind of funny. It's pretty cool. Okay, now let's get into, like, the actual things in this variation that are the two setup moves. Okay, so here's the Artillery Strike and the Claymore. So the Claymore, we've all seen, he puts the mine on the ground, you can jump over it, you can even like launch your opponent into it, and but be wary, because if you walk into it, you will also get blown up, <laughs> so it's kind of scary, like if I jump wrongly and like walk into it, I get hit, and it's unblockable, so it's a really awesome move, so you just have to be careful when you're jumping over it, you don't accidentally, like if you just jump twice, because if he's jumping hitbox, he gets hit by it, so you need to like jump, stand still, and then jump again, and then you can actually get over it, but it is a really cool move, <laughs> Because he can actually get combos if he pushes the opponent into them, unlike Rain's like lightning strike, he can actually convert off of this, and if he does a button and they fall into it, it'll actually connect. So he can do something... I don't know, something simple. Well, I mean, he can do something more complicated, but I'll just do like this. But yeah, you can see he gets to combo off of it if I just do this. I can get a combo off of it because I pushed him into it. And um, if you're up very close, it'll actually just hit them. So like if you, even though you're standing pretty close to it, it will just hit them. Oops, hello. So that's pretty cool. So you can get some combos off of it pretty easily that way. 
So like if I do a down one into this, it's pretty risky, but you could if you wanted. And you can probably just go into, yeah, into this. So if I do like down three into this and then they don't expect it and then they like move slightly. I wonder if the poke would actually make them activate it. But yeah, then you can do something like this and you get a big chunk of damage because they get hit by it. I wonder if I, how will I do this? If I record Rambo just, um, blocking and then poke. Okay, so it is kind of slow, so you can't just do it. Yeah, so if you do get it, manage to get it out, like maybe after you actually hit a poke. So like, if he isn't, wait, how do I get him to get hit? Yeah, and then when he g tries to do his poke, he gets actually get gets hit by it. So that's this is pretty cool. Oops. And then he gets hit by it, and then he broke away. Oh, because he's holding down. <laughs> But yeah, so there's a lot of cool mix-ups you can do with this, and I'm sure the potential will just be like learned more and more. And obviously if he amplifies it, he actually covers it with leaves, and it's completely invisible, but it is still it is still there, and you know, you can push your opponent into it, and do whatever you want. So that's a really cool move. I think it's one of the most unique moves in the game, to be honest. Um, let me put him back on custom. It's just really cool how we can just place it down, like uh, even after certain like setups, you just do it like this. And if the opponent tries to come in, they need to like jump over it, because if they just try and walk in, you know, obviously it's unblockable. And if they try and try and jump in on you, you know, you can make a read like maybe you jump against them or like anti air them, because it's pretty obvious that they're gonna jump over it if they're trying to get in on you. Or they just have to stay back, and you can uh, throw some arrows, throw some of these, because you know they don't want to come in on you and get hit by an unblockable. That you can combo off of. <laughs> So it's a really cool move, and I can't wait to see what people can actually find out to do with this. You know, obviously there's simple things you can do like this that'll leave them kind of close. Like if I go, um, that's kind of close. Or maybe this. They're very close to me there. Even closer there. But yeah. Oops. <laughs> so you do have to be careful yourself though, because you can get hit by it, and then they'll get a combo. But I don't know, it's a really awesome move and I love it. And I just love just throwing it out and seeing what I can actually use it for online. But um, I also have this, this grenade strike. It's really awesome. And you can throw these out like very fast. And they like, I just like, <laughs> an airstrike, he throws out, you know, the smoke grenade. And you can throw these a lot, like even while the other one's going. See, I can be throwing out like multiple at the same time. Kind of hard to time. But yeah, this is a very cool move. It kind of reminds me of Rain's Lightning, kind of like the Claymore. But, um, because, you know, it's a slow move. They have to block it. It's obviously extremely plus on block if they decide to block it. How do I get up to block it? Block, please. Yeah, plus 58. So yeah, even just from blocking it, I have time to, like, run in and grab them. And it, it'll be, like, almost the same frame. Yeah, <laughs> there's not much they can do there. And like, you can even grab them before it comes out, like, and then it... Oh wow, then it doesn't actually even hit, so you can see, if I grab him... Oh no. Yeah, but you know, it can either be grab before it, grab after it, or obviously, you know, while they're trying to block this, you know, go into, go into an overhead, go in for a sweep or something, and it'll still hit them. It's a pretty awesome move, and it's pretty easy to set up, you know, after I do something like this, you know, just throw the grenade out, I can do the close one. So yeah, there's only three ranges, by the way, there's only close, which is fair, medium, and far. But they have very big hitboxes, they cover a lot of the screen, and they're big explosions. And you can actually pretty easily combo off of them if you just, like, jump. Um, oh yeah, he's blocking. Just do the close one, and then, you know, jump in. And that was pretty easy, and I can just combo into whatever I want after that. I could even set up my claymore if I'd like. <laughs> so there's just a lot of cool things that you can do off of that. It's very plus, and it's honestly one of the better setups in this game, because it comes out pretty fast. Like that grenade, like, it, there's a bit of recovery on it. Like, the recovery is whack, like it keeps changing while you throw it out. So it's a bit slow, but you know, he throws the thing out, it comes out kind of 
like he can recover kind of quickly and he can throw a bunch out on the screen and just make the screen look ridiculous like all the smoke grenades and explosions it looks ridiculous <laughs> but it's awesome and it can yeah so especially when you get good at using them at the right times like if you may think they're gonna block this one you can actually just throw out another one while they're blocking it oh damn it And then they have to block the next one, because if you think they're going to block that one. And then there's another one coming out. It's just, it's a really crazy move, and I love it so much. There's just so much you can do off of it. Set up another one. You can just throw them as much as he likes. Obviously, it's very easy to combo off of in the corner. And, um, but yeah, it's just such an awesome move. <laughs> and there's, you can easily get combos off of it, even if you just keep it grounded, or you think they're going to try and, like, get away from it. There's just so much you can do, and it has a really big hitbox. And even if like, you just throw it out and they're just gonna like stand there and respect it, then you know, you can go into your arrows. I think you can actually even combo off it if your timing is correct with the arrows. Yeah, see? And you can probably get all three arrows. Oh no, they don't connect. But like still, the fact that you can combo off of it from full screen, you know, they just have to block your arrows then as well. And so you know, he has a lot of like zoning game if he has this as well. He can do that quick thing and then throw out this while he's got the, the, like, the long knockdown. There's just so much awesome stuff he can do with this move. It's very easy for him to set up. He can set it up safely in a lot of scenarios, but usually I just do like back 2 to 1 into the close one. And depending on where we are, you can get super easy combos off of it. And it's just, it's such a fun move. And it's so plus on block, even if they block it. Like sometimes just do it off of down 1 or something. It's crazy, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I love this move so much. It's probably one of my favorite moves in the game, especially one of ramp my favorite one of Rambo's moves. So yeah, very strong tool. And that's all we have in this variation, right? Yeah, so he has the Claymore and those, which kind of work in tandem from each other and it makes this variation kind of like a setup variation. So if I like, you know, did the things that I was doing before, like down one into this, and then they get hit by that, I can do into this, and then they're blocking that. And I can do the same thing again, go into this, jump in the air, get some combos and I can even like while this is out and they're trying to like you know get over this I can throw out this one you know since they don't want to come in they might be a bit confused because you know they don't want to run in while I've got the claim on so they're kind of respecting me I have time to throw this one out they just work really well in tandem and even if I've done um like if I do this close one I can do down one into this claim more and then be able to set it up for free it's there's there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with these, and I'm super excited to see what um, the likes of Sonic Fox and pros that really like setups, what they can do with these two moves, because they are really awesome. And they only cost you one slot, so really, really awesome stuff. Okay, in his third variation, I believe I had, I've set as like kind of like the zoning variation, so I've given him all of his moves that are kind of long-reaching moves. So he has the gunshot, um and the mace trap are the two main zoning things. So he has these guns that look really awesome. I love the animation for this. <laughs> um, it does 90 damage, which is above average for a projectile. They are a lot high, but you know, it puts them completely full screen and it looks amazing, but you can also amplify it and it does 140, I believe, 144. That's a lot of damage just for like projectiles if they get hit by that. And it also, it just looks amazing. Like, look at this. And it is also very safe. It doesn't do as much um, uh, chip as you would expect. But, you know, it pushes them very far away, so almost no one's going to be punishing this. And it just does so many hits on block. So many times, whenever you use this online, people think it's over. Because, you know, how he, if you listen, he, like, stops screaming. It, like, sounds like it's completely over. But then you keep hear like, the bullets just keep hitting the opponent. It just keeps going and going and going. Like, it seems like it's going there for, like, way longer than it should be, but, you know, I'm not complaining, because that is really cool. <laughs> like, there's no way, even though it's minus 21, there's no one, way anyone's gonna punish something, like, from over here. So, that's the way you can keep safe, like, your, um, this string that's very unsafe, you know, just do that, and if they block it, just go into this, and then they probably can't punish it. So, yeah, this is a really awesome move. It's basically, there's nothing too, like, interesting about it, though. It's just, like, what it, what it shows. It does some damage, or it does some more damage, and a ton of hits. So even though it doesn't do a lot of chip damage, a lot of the time people release block, like, way early, and then they accidentally get hit by it, so really good move for chipping people out anyways. So, um, his next zoning move in this one is the, like, the log swing. And this move... Oh, I didn't realize it had a, has a close and a far. 
It doesn't even actually tell you it has a close enough art, but look, if I just do it normally, it hits here and doesn't really hit full screen, but if I hold forwards, yeah, that's definitely a close enough art. Yeah, well, and it hits a lot earlier if I do the far version and I'm, like, here. But yeah, this move, it's kind of just, like, completely cover the entire screen while also bending down. <laughs> like, it's a really awesome zoning tool. So, you know, your Kung Laos and stuff that love jumping through the air, like, no matter where they are, they just, you know, are jumping around, ready to do dive kicks and jump kicks and just jumping around doing, like, I don't know, just being random. They do teleports in the air, just jumping around and stuff. But people love doing that. If I can record, like, Terminator doing some of that, you know, being a bit of a Kung Lao. And, but with this move, absolutely not. This covers so much of the sky and so much of the screen, it, you just have no chance. Like, even on the ground, it hits them, like, super far away. Look at this. It's crazy. And if I do the far version... Oh, yeah. So you can actually jump, like, in between where their rope is, but, like... It has such a big swing arc, like, it can be almost impossible to look, to avoid. <laughs> like, it hits so much of the screen if they try and jump, you know. No chance of not getting anti aired by this. Like, you, you just have to be lucky. That's the only way you're not getting, you're gonna, like, dodge this, is just if you're lucky. So yeah, really good move. And you can actually amplify it to make it a full log. And this one actually just goes, like, covers the entire screen just on its own. So like you don't, there's no close and far, it just goes like everywhere. If you just want to completely shut down the entire screen, you don't want to guess whether to do like the close or far one, because they can miss slightly if they jump perfectly. If you just want to just, nope, absolutely get hit by this, and it does a bit more damage as well. Just do the amplified version, you get the big log. And the big log actually has a crushing blow as well. If you hit three of these moves at a time, it doesn't matter if it's the close version, the far version, or even the amplified version. If you get any combination of um, move of these, and it's a third one, Crushing blow, 280 damage is really big. And that does sound like kind of a tall order, making people like hit three of these in a row. But like, if people are jumping around and doing stuff, it's a really good move. Like, it covers so much of the screen. Like, it's very easy to get hit by two of them. If I just do this, that's already two. And you know, like, I just, then I have to do the amplified one, which covers the entire screen. I see them do anything. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, okay. And then I do the amplified one. Do that. Oh, I think it's because I did a down three accidentally there before. But yeah, it's very easy to get like the first two. It's like, you know, like maybe if after they get knocked down by the first one, they decide to jump again. And then you just need to react to them doing anything. Amplify, crushing blow, a ton of damage. So that's a really good move. And as you can see, just like a lot of his other moves, he bends down while he does it. So he'll go under other projectiles and hit them with those. So it's all around just a really awesome move. Like he could even, could even get the crushing blow that way. Okay, I'm going to make him stop jumping because that's annoying me. <laughs> But, like, he could even get the crushing blow that way, like, maybe he bends under one projectile, they go to throw another one, he bends under the next one, and then, you know, he's got it ready to get this big damage. But, yeah, it's a really awesome move, even though the crushing blow does seem a little bit hard to get, it's really amazing. Um, so here's that, here's the guns, and he also has this very interesting move, the shoulder roll, where he will just roll over to the other side of the opponent. It has a close version, um... There. you can see he like doesn't go too far past him and if I stand a little bit further back he won't go past him. A regular version where he goes, you know, very easily past him and a far version which he goes, it doesn't seem like he goes that much further to be honest. Oh yeah. But yeah, what these moves, they're, they're pretty unusual so let's talk about it. So if he does something like, you know, off of, off of a poke or something, you know, he cancels it. Uh, hello? This strike on its own is minus 11, but that's, to be honest, it's not that punishable, especially depending on where you're actually hitting them by. Like, if I do the normal version or the far version of it like this, like, sometimes the pushback or you're very close and they're not actually going to be able to punish you, like, off of this, like, if I just do something like that, minus 11 with this much pushback, like, it might honestly not be punished. But if you don't want to do the punishable attack, you can also cancel it, and then you just completely you know, ignore it, and that can lead to some really good, like, um, some good, uh, blah, 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 pressure and stuff, so if he does, like, you know, some of his mids, and they think he's gonna go in, for, you know, the strike or something, you know, because he's got a mid there, so they have to deal with that, but if you just cancel it, he can go into, like, whatever he wants. Go in for throw, go in for another mid, he can go in for his overhead, or, or a sweep, or whatever, there's so much you can do off of, you can do off of a cancel with this character. 
Um, but yeah, uh, other than cancelling it, he also has one more option. He can amplify it for an overhead. And you might think that's pretty crazy on itself, that he can just, like, get an overhead instead of, like, the mid, you know, that's pretty good. Um, this overhead is safe on block. So if I go like this, it's zero. It's so, so safe that sometimes it's actually even plus. So if I do something like this, it's plus one. Sometimes it's even plus two. So depending on what attacks you're getting it off of and whether they block or hit it, like, he's either being plus, he's, he's either being zero is the lowest this move ever is. So he's either zero or he's plus on block. Or like, even plus two. Like, this move is crazy. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, and because he has really good mids, like, off of plus frames, he can, he can go into a lot. Like, if I do something like, um... Excuse me. So, in this range, he has this mid that'll almost hit, like, depending on which move you're doing. Like, he can nearly get this mid, he has this long-reaching mid, which he can make them, you know, deal with. This one reaches really far as well. This one's usually the best one you're gonna be throwing out, so maybe after you've done, like, this. Or, like, this. Excuse me. You're gonna be throwing out this mid, because he doesn't actually move his body forward, so... Sometimes they can, like, poke you out of these ones, but this one... is just a great mid he can throw out with his plus frames, and it's very fast as well. So, you know, something like this, goes in for the amplifier, or if you go in for the short version, it'll actually be a bit closer. Go in for these mids, but yeah, it's just really awesome that he can go in for an overhead, so not only is it kind of a mix-up, but it's also plus on block or zero, so this is a really amazing move, and that's not even all of it. If I put Terminator to record again, and I make him, I don't know, just down two or something, and I do this version, he gets a crushing blow from it. And just like his throw, which crushing blow, which has like basically the same animation, he gets a combo off of this. This is so awesome. <laughs> and he can get big damage off of it, and like, because it leaves him on the ground, he can get, you know, unbreakable damage. Just go in for like a, dra a ground string into a special move and get big chunks of damage. And man, this move is just crazy. It has so many options. And I. It's probably one of my the moves I would be most likely to use with Rambo, like in most of my variations. Because not only does he get a crushing blow from it, just from getting a punish, which will happen a lot. Like if you just, you know, do it out here, you know, maybe you roll under a, a projectile or something and it punishes their projectile. Or it counters it and goes under something. Or they just, you know, press any button and it punishes or counters. You're getting a crushing blow for it. And that's just, that's awesome. And from the crushing blow, not only is it just a crushing blow, it's a combo crushing blow, so you can, you know, just get a bunch of meatless damage off of it. Um, I don't know, something like... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Something like this, I guess, you could do, or just, like, this into... Yeah, so if I go... You can go into, like, this, you know, get some good, like, meatless damage. And as you saw before, I can easily go into my meatless combo starter. And then into my, um, Fatal Blow, and, you know, it's scary stuff, and it's such an awesome move. He can either be plus, he can either use it for cancels, he can get a crushing blow from it, and it's also just a, a low roll, so he'll go into projectiles, he can go for more pressure to cancel. It's a crazy move, and it's only one slot, so I highly suggest using it. The guns, you know, if you're wanting to zone, obviously they're, they're pretty good as well. They do a lot of damage and a lot of hits. And this swing, as I was explaining, is also very good. So a lot of his zoning tools that he can equip are very powerful moves. And yeah, you basically can't go wrong with equipping any of them with like any loadout. Like even if you're doing that one with the combos or one with command grabs or stuff, just throw in one of those and they're very powerful. Okay, so for the last variation, the last few moves we have are his um, combo extensions, which lead into some grabs after some combos, and his crawl. I love his crawl, but we'll start off with the combos since they're a bit simpler. So basically it just means, you know how usually he only had like the 1-2-1 one, one as his only extension after his standing one? Well now he can actually do 1-2 grab. And this I believe, I'll just check. Um, if I make him block and duck. Wait, no I want him to... Damn AI options, stance hold and duck. 
So yeah, if they're blocking it, even if they're... Um, I think it's a mid command grab, but yeah, instead of just going in for the mid, even if it is a high command grab, this is a complete mix-up because you can either go for a safe mid or for a throw, so that just adds a lot of mix-ups to just his regular string, you know, can go for this, keep like stacking it, like, and then go for the mid, or go in for the grab, get a quick bit of damage, very powerful stuff, and I think, you know, it just also just adds a bit of damage to his, um, to his standing string, if you ever want that. Uh, the next one he gets is off of his... Oh yeah, it's off of his, um, this move. So this move is really awesome now. So not, not only is it his needless combo starter, where you can get, you know, pretty decent damage needlessly, but it is also a grab ender now. So even if they're blocking it, and you want to keep yourself safe, like, because you know how this is very unsafe, and you're like, oh man, don't want to be this punishable, and they're ready to block it. Going for a grab, it doesn't matter if they block it, because they're getting grabbed. And obviously this is punishable as well, if they jump out of it. But, you know, that's a super powerful tool to have, just be able to, off of his, like, main mid, which is 11 frames. This 11 frame mid that is safe on the first hit, he can either go into a meterless combo starter if you re react to it hitting, or if you see that they're blocking it, you can go in for a grab, and it's just a complete mix-up that way. So, very, very strong tool that way. And the last one he gets is off of his back three. And I'm just going to stop making um, Terminator block, because this one isn't actually... Let me stop talking. This one isn't actually a grab, but it, it's a grab animation, and it actually just re leads to a restand, and it's, off of his, it's a back three throw. And yeah, it isn't an actual throw like the other ones, but it is a really cool move, and it leads to a restand. It does pretty decent damage, and it's pretty plus restand as well. I think it's plus 10. The plus 10 meterless restand, that's a pretty f powerful move to have in your arsenal. So after like any extended combo, like if you have more combo moves equipped, like the uh, like the lift up and stuff, you can easily end your combos in this. And it's plus 10 restand, so you know you can quickly dash in, go for your overhead, go for some sweeps, or just dash in throw. Like maybe you've done like a long combo without jumping. Like you know, you do your forward three, and then do the lift up, and then you do like this into it and this animation is pretty long in itself and then you dash in and you do your standing throw you get a crushing blow from that then after the restand so that's pretty awesome stuff <laughs> um yeah and there's not too much else to say about those they're they're pretty good things just to have with you melina has ones like these like it's just always good to have extended strings and more options off of your strings and these are honestly really good options actually i don't know how this is on block it's probably punishable oh no see like even that's safe basically safe minus eight is like decently safe especially if it has a little bit of pushback yeah so he, he can just go for this restand it'll just leave them standing whenever and obviously has these mix-up throws off of an amazing mid as well. So, super awesome stuff there, and those are only one slot. Oh, the Fubar, I just put this in, it's just his command grab. I thought it would match, you know, having other command grabs. So now he can get, like, throws off of his, um, his pokes. And now he can also get throws off of his strings. So that's pretty scary throw variation if you have those two together. But okay, the last thing that we're gonna talk about, and this move, I know I've said this about a lot of moves, but I think this one might actually be my favorite for Rambo. It is just so funny, and actually so useful. So, he goes into the crawl stance, he can't actually crawl back backwards, which surprised me, but he can crawl forwards as much as he wants, he can just hold it down or just tap forward and do like a little bit. But you know, he can just keep crawling along the ground, and from this stance he has just a basic, like, swipe, which is actually a low, which is very good. Um, how plus is it? I guess you can't really tell, because... Yeah. But you know, it has a decent um, amount of hits done. They get like knocked back for a bit there, so you have time, like after you hit one, you can crawl up and get the next one. And um, he also has a parry, which, you know, I'm pretty sure it parries lows and mids, so that's very good. It'll be good for parry parrying like pokes or like terminated his like forward three. So if anyone's trying to get you off of the ground, which is especially good because a lot of the time when you go into this state, people just try and do like their sweeps or their like pokes or something just to like hit you off the ground because you are so low. Like that's the main thing about this move. You go onto literally anything. Um, so people try to sweep and stuff, but because you've got this low parry, that's really powerful. And you can just actually keep doing it. If you hold down, he'll go back into the crowd. So you can just keep parrying. Like if you're not sure when they're actually going to do it, 
like you don't want to be like punishable for the parry, so you can just do it again. And then eventually they'll probably do a sweep or something. And then you manage to hit them with this and you know, they get hit by it. I'll record, record, <coughs> I will record Terminator doing his 4-3. Oops. You know, just leads to 90 damage. Really good move. And like that on its own isn't amazing, but it's the fact that it's paired with these, oh uh, no, 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 no. It's the fact that it's paired with like the low strike and like there's the parry as well. They can also go for a throw and this is, this is a genuine mid-command grab, where he just grabs their leg and throws them, does 100 damage, so that's pretty good. And But the fact that he has a low and a low command grab means that they have to completely guess whenever you go into this state. And as you can see there, it actually has a crushing blow depending on how far he crawls. So if he crawls a decent distance, it doesn't actually have to be that far. It's only like about here. And you'll get the crushing blow a little bit further. You know, you just have to like go a bit further than like starting distance. And you get this crushing blow, 260 damage from a throw, a mid command grab that didn't cost you any meter. You can do this. So, you know, like if you've maybe gone in. So, take this example. So, you do this, like you've got done something and gone into this, and you do like the mid. You do like the, 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 the low like stab, and they get hit by that, and they think, or you do it twice, and they think, keep thinking that you're gonna do the throw, but you keep going in for the low stab. And then you just end up actually going in for the throw. And after all of that, because you've crawled so much, you'll definitely get the crushing blow off of that. So there's just so much mix up. And then after like after you've done that whole sequence and you actually get the crushing blow, they're probably gonna think you're good and go for the for the keep like doing stuff like that. Like keep going through the lows and then go for the throw when you block it. But then next time you can just go straight in for the throw, and then they just get hit by that, and then oh man, it's just so good. And it actually is a genuine command grab, so there's so many things you can do off of it, like if I just do this, I can just cancel into it and go for a throw, and like, off of 2-2, two, two, it works very well, because it doesn't, um, if I actually have that hit, that's not gonna connect, and I'm actually gonna be punishable from that, probably, actually maybe even not, it recovers pretty quickly, but from 2-2, two, two, they don't have that much, um, hit stun, so you can actually just do this either way, and it'll hit the opponent. I'm pretty sure that is actually a genuine combo, and they can't actually jump out of that, so that, that just connects, but if they are blocking, that's also a good mix-up as well. Because you've gone into the throw when you could have also just gone like mid, mid, mid. But you actually just went mid, mid. Uh, hello? Mid, mid, throw. Or you could even go mid, mid, low, and then a throw. <laughs> it's just such an awesome tool and there's so many things you can do from it. And because it's got lows off of it, that also means you can like use it as a mix-up, so like off of this. That into a low, that actually combos. So you could do like, you know how this move is a safe overhead string with two overheads in it. You could go low, like the mid low or mid overhead, mid overhead low or mid overhead overhead. And if they get hit by one of them and like you do it incorrectly, no drama, cause they actually, it just actually combos, you know, just do this, they get hit by that, you know, you've got some hits on from getting hit by the low, you can crawl up, do a throw, that's just, man, this move is so cool, and that's, that's not it, we're still going, you can actually cancel this, like, pretty fast, so if I do something like this, um, he gets up surprisingly quickly, like, if I do, like, this string, like, it's not that minus, so you can use this in pressure, not only is like, is it good for pressure because you know, you have lows and throws and stuff all over the place and even a parry. And he's like on the ground, so they, you know, they can't just do like standing buttons or like, even a lot of mids go over the, his head. So like, not only is it good for avoiding stuff, it has mids, it has lows, throws, and parries off of it. They can also just cancel it, so you can go like, or um... And then like, just go for his overhead or something, because you know, that. They're ready for all of the options you have after this, you know, they don't know if you're gonna go for the low, or for a parry, or for a throw. So you just end up cancelling it, and you can like, go in for his overhead even, like... <laughs> there's just so much you can do from this, it's a crazy move, I love it so much, and it's probably the one that I'll run in like, every Rambo variation. Unless I'm using something that conflicts with it, I'm gonna use this like, whenever I can, because it is so awesome. And it also makes him do a lot more damage with his BNB, so if I do something like this... He has a BNB that does a lot of damage now. Keep in mind, that was zero meter, so no no meter bones, and that does as much as much damage as like a Cetrion BNB does. Like how much max damage BNBs are like 280 damage. Rambo can get that meterlessly off of an 11 frame mid, guys. 11 frames. 
So you get this mid, you just dash in, go for this string. It can be a little tight, because you do need to get the dash in or else it'll miss. Maybe you don't. Hey, wait. And then you go in for the throw, like, man, that's a lot of damage. And, like, if I get it off of, if I put on easy crushing blows, you know, I can get this big damage off of something like, you know, these, these crushing blows that he has. And that just makes him do, like, a lot more damage in general. Oh, wait, I better turn off easy crushing blows, or else that's going to be a, a lot of damage that it's fake. Like, 364, that's a lot of damage for zero, that cost me zero meter. That combo right there. So, this move is so awesome. I love it so much. I'll be using it whenever I can. It's just, <laughs> it's so amazing. Anyways, guys, I think that's all I have to say about Rambo. Wait, let me just check. I have talked about everything in this variation. Yeah, so it was just the extra throws. So, <laughs> yeah, this, this version of Rambo would be so scary. It's got so many throws. It has, like, a throw that way. It has a throw, like, if you just go, like, you know, and then into an actual command grab. It has a throw if you go into at a crawl into a command grab. Man, this is scary stuff. But anyways, guys, that's all I have to say about Rambo. That's, um, you know, we've gone through some combos and stuff. I will have a separate combo video where I'll go into just, like, just the combos for each move. But that is a breakdown of all of Rambo's stuff, all of his moves. He is such an awesome character, and I hope you guys enjoy playing with him. I hope you've learned something from this breakdown. Anyways, thanks for watching this <laughs> very long breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!